It is early on a Tuesday morning. We're still in L.A. Everyone's wearing pants today. Big update, and it's time. Run it back. Starts now. Run it up to run it back. Yeah. Run it up to run it back. Run it back. <laughs> run it up run it back. Yeah. Let's make run sure. Okay. Up, laptop, laptop, back. laptop. <laughs> Chandler. <laughs> it's, all it's all up here. It's all up here. It's all up here. We can get you one. I mean, if, I if times are hard, we will, we'll put it together. This economy? We'll find, <laughs> we'll find something for you. Uh, good morning. This is Run It Back. This is Shams. That is Chandler. That is Eddie. And um, second day in a row, we're all together. We're not fired. I'm, we're I'm excited. Going. We all look very alive, honestly. Back to back days, we're, we're, we're going. We Our added layers. Up. Like, that's that's big. You know, speak we're for more yourself on the internet. <laughs> Two chains. <laughs> Two chains for Eddie. But that 4 a.m. wake up, not doing it for you, Eddie? This is the first back to back I've done in 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> Good. We have one more tomorrow, and then we'll get through it. But we're going to start uh, start today with the Hawks. There's a team like this, I think, every season. It's the um, the Achilles heel, if you will. A Hawks beating the Bucks. Second time, seven days. Your biggest takeaway from that is. Do they have their number? I don't know if they have their number. I think the Bucks got off to such a hot start, and they're you know they're slowing down a little bit. They're obviously missing Drew Holiday. They're missing Chris Middleton. They're relying on young guys now like Bochamp, who I love. Who's I think he's the dope. kid. Yeah, he's a hooper. But um, I mean, listen. I think the best version of the Atlanta Hawks is is when DeAndre Hunter plays like he did last night. The guy can kind of do it all. He got the big extension. He can switch one through five. He knocks down shots. He's getting to the free throw line. I love him. He's such a hardworking, good kid, and I think he's crucial to kind of their success moving forward. They obviously have Trey. They have Dejounte, John Collins. But I think the glue guy for that team is DeAndre Hunter, and, and he played really well last night. Is it, isn't it funny? Like, I'm sure you had this when you played. There's always that team. I know back in the day for the Spurs, the Phoenix Suns were the team they just couldn't beat for whatever reason. Like, how does that happen, Eddie, that there's just always that one team that sticks it to them all the time? Well, there's some X's and O's things here as well. This is a heavy spread pick and roll team with Atlanta. And Trey loves to hold that ball. He loves to snake the screen. And with the team like the Bucks, who consistently play drop with Brooke Lopez, that gives him every opportunity to be that kind of ball handler he wants to be. They played him tough two years ago in the playoffs, and if Trey doesn't step on that ref, who knows how it ends up going. So, yeah, they, they're going to feel confident about that team. Also helps to not have your starting backcourt to play against and, you know, probably the best defender in the league against Trey, Drew. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, it's, it's not the truest representation of what these teams are, but they're definitely confident against those guys for yeah, sure. Yeah, Giannis hadn't played in a week. I mean, that's, that's something, right? It was it, a little rest. For sure, but I, I listen, I do think they match up well with, with guys like DeAndre and John Collins and these young guys like Griffin and Johnson. These guys can match up. They can switch pick and rolls. But, yeah, the the Bucks. listen, the Bucks and Celtics, I think, are at the top of the East, and, and uh, you know, they're banged up right now. So I, I take it with a grain of salt. I think it's great for the Hawks, but it, it's – I'm not – Really not worried. panicking. No, not panicking it's over. quite. No, yeah. I mean, I mean, Milwaukee's like, like Chandler said, without Chris Milton, without Drew Holiday, like they're they're beat up, and they're you could tell they got off to a fast start, but they are always with Mike Boonholz are gonna make sure that they take the side of caution. Not only with Chris Middleton, Drew Holiday's missed time with an ankle injury. Mm -hmm. uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo missed time with knee, and he never wants to sit. Right. So the fact that he was sitting makes it makes it known that they're they're trying to make sure they're cautious with these guys. So I don't. I mean, you know, it's a it's a good win for the Hawks. You know, for them, they need to build momentum. Uh, this is a team, it's a newly constructed team. They have some new guys, Dante Murray. So for them to get wins like this is important. So I love, I think a month into the season is a perfect time to predict. <laughs> I think that's where we are right now. But if healthy, Celtics and Bucks, who are you taking? I got Celtics. Okay, um, every time. You know, I want to see the Bucks beat them. They played them close. So, like, there's a reason to feel like the Bucks are better than them. They played them close last year without Chris Middleton. So, but... We're watching the Celtics get better day by day. Mm -hmm. They've been doing it all season. Jason Tatum is making a leap. He might be a top five player at this point. He's looking MVP. He's going to get MVP votes this year. So I'm going to go to Celtics, but look, the Bucks are right there. Yeah, I like the Bucks. I think they're the team to beat. I think they got the best player in the NBA. I think they got one, you know the best duo when healthy when, when Middleton comes back. Uh, and they have the best defending point guard in Drew Holiday. So I, I think they got it all. I think they're deep. I think they got size. They got youth. They got guys like Bobby Portis and Ben Lopez. They're stretching the floor, knocking down shots. Uh, I, I, and they have the best player in the world. They have the MVP. They have, yeah. they have Giannis. And, and I think they're the team that you got to go through. 
By the way, Giannis talking about Wimbenyama is some good video. So right. if you haven't seen that, Google it. Shout out to Serge Ibaka's it's so cooking good. show. I yeah. love that cooking show. It's it's the perfect show. Uh, speaking of Jason Tatum, though, we'll go back to the Celtics. They had a game last night. They beat the Thunder, but we're not we're not going to start with the actual game. Can we talk about the technical foul that might have been one of the worst calls of all time? Who who thinks about this? Like, what is happening in this moment? <laughs> Honestly, I think this ref is extremely embarrassed. Because <laughs> I think watching this back, he realized that Oof. Tate, like Jason, was not even talking to him, was no, upset with himself. Tough. This is, I swear, the weakest technical foul I've seen in my life. Weak AF. Weak AF. You saw the comment. <laughs> yeah, it sounded like, sound like what, what Jason said. Like, I don't know. You got to rescind that. You absolutely oh, have that's to. That's rescinded. embarrassing for the league. I know they have like a more emphasis on. I forget what they called it, but cutting down on these, basically. Oh, come on. I'm a, as a fan, like, yo, let them try this. Like, the, but not if you're even. a ref, like, give it back to them. Like, cuss back, yeah. you know? But it's, the thing about it is, is if you read this before you see the video, you think that he's doing that thing where players aggressively, yeah. sarcastically no, clap is, in your yeah. face. He's not, it's literally just like a, oops. I honestly it. think this will be a good thing because I think now refs will be kind of on notice and will hopefully be more lenient because this is a horrible look. And like I said, this ref is thoroughly embarrassed I mean, today and, and realizes that that's not a technical can a, foul. Can a that's, ref rescind his own foul? That's, that's a weak today. foul, too. That's a weak foul. Like, yeah. don't give me a tech because you blew a call and I said, yo, you blew a call. Right. That's bad. That's now bad. I get an X point. Did like, he yo. even do that, though? I just, I feel like. I think he said, like, damn. He was like, shot. He, like, KD tweeted about it. Like, then, it's, I mean, but it's then you'll bad. see, like, other guys. You'll see other guys. Guys, like Draymond, they'll actually get in the ref's face and they'll kind of, the ref will kind of oh, brush it off, but then you tee up him yeah. for this. Draymond yeah. rules are a different set of rules. That's it's just yeah. ridiculous. Do we think it gets rescinded? I mean, is there. Yeah, I mean, there's yes. a process, but a, a technical file like that usually typically gets rescinded. But we talked about Tony Brothers, I think, what, last week? This is like the opposite approach of Tony Brothers. <laughs> yeah. He didn't even talk smack back. No. Like, Tony Brothers would say something back. He just. Oh, look at up. that. Like, well, you, you got players <laughs> yeah. putting their two cents that's in. That's how bad you it was. You got to put up Chandler's comment. Yeah, he listen. He's, he's not lying. I swear, this is this is this is beyond bad. <laughs> it's gonna get rescinded. I mean, I hope so. I, I just Tatum had no idea too. He's like, oh, I wonder why that whistle blew. And then when he realized it was for him, yeah, he was genuinely home, confused. Like, it made no sense to me, but it it made for good conversation and great video because we were all left confused <laughs> by the entire thing. Um, do you want to talk about the uh, one of the guys they played against, Mr. Gilgis Alexander? It's just one of the longest, greatest names of all time. Thirty-seven points. I keep reading so much about him possibly being on the trading block, which I do not understand. But as far as NBA scorers are concerned, where do you put him? I mean, he's he, the kid's a killer. He, he is going. He is absolutely getting buckets. He's getting double teamed and still putting up numbers. <laughs> uh, he's doing exactly what we talked about yesterday. He's almost playing too good for the situation <laughs> they're in. And you know Presti's wondering, you know, what he could get for him. How many picks could he get for Picks does one team need? That's, and, and, and that's the thing. I mean, Chigos Alexander is what 24 years old, so he's not. He's one of the older guys on that team, but he fits right into that structure. So that's why the sense I've always got is they want to continue to build around him. That's the guy. Even though you have teams like the Lakers, the Knicks, the Raptors, yeah. you see a different team rumored every week. It seems every like, week. but that's a guy that you want to keep. They have the draft picks. It's like, what are you, you going to trade another one of your top players and get even more draft picks? They have enough they draft picks to last them the decade, <laughs> like, right? And I don't understand. Like you have this player right now is 24. The draft pick might get as good as him but probably Maybe. not so and this kid's not like he's 30 34 this guy's him young. and giddy like that's a backcourt you can build around and if chet comes back he's healthy right and God. who knows you get the number one pick you get victor imagine a front court of victor and chet and then you have those two guys in your backcourt now you're really building something and those guys need someone like sga they need that floor general they need that go-to score those kids they're, they're very good but i don't think they're going to come into the league averaging 25 30 points you a just game. don't know you need this on this team Eight assists last night as well. <laughs> you know, we talk about all the younger guards we have in the league, John Morant, Trey, uh, uh, Darius Garland. He's there with those guys. He's just as talented. He's proven it in the playoffs when he was with the Clippers. He's proven it in the playoffs when he, he, he was with the Thunder as well in the bubble. He, he's talented, man. And it's like, yeah, as NBA fans are like, yo, you, we think they're tanking. You trade out of that guy and you get rid of that contract. That contract is going to get better as the years go on and the cap goes up. You got to hold on to that piece and try to build around you him. Gotta and build around someone, right? like, I mean, you got to pay someone, right? That's yeah. the thing. Total salary floor. Like, he had a moment last night, which I'm sure he's very proud of, and everyone who loves him is very proud of. Just breaking ankles is, is the name of the game. Oh, Oof. good. I mean, there's more than ankles breaking. That was nasty. I feel like there's like a lot going on there. But I wonder, this is my question. 
Number one, he is young, and he probably hears some of the noise about, is he on the trading block? Is he not on the trading block? What does that do to a kid mentally? And secondly, are we only talking about trading because it's Oklahoma City, and we've all just grown accustomed to them just collecting I guess draft picks instead of building. That's usually how it works, right? In those smaller markets, yeah. whether you're talking about New Orleans uh, with Anthony Davis, Shea Gilgis with Oklahoma State, it's like these guys, prom for whatever reason, they prominently be, be described, you know, in so on social media. I'm curious from Chandler's perspective, like being a player, if you were in SGA's yeah. position and you're playing in Oklahoma City, you're on a full max contract, you like it there. From all by all accounts, he, he does like it there. The organization wants you there. Like, how are you? Is it outside pressures? Like, what leads you to? Yeah, I think it goes. I think it goes both ways. I think he loves being the man on this team. I think he loves kind of helping the development of these young guys, and he sees the potential. He sees the future with Chet coming back. He sees Josh Giddy as a hooper, and he sees this guy in France that could really help his team next year. <laughs> But then, yeah, he also sees a big market, and he and he knows he's becoming this star that is an elite mm. player, and he wants the recognition of a Brooklyn Net, of a Los Angeles Laker, and you don't necessarily God, get. Does he though? Look at you, them. That's... But you don't necessarily get that <laughs> that love and that attention. We talk about Ben Simmons. Him and Ben Simmons kind of need to switch situations. He mm. needs to be in like a small market, and this kid's too good to be in the small market. He needs to go to a big market. Can we make that happen? Don't don't, don't tease me, Chandler. <laughs> don't don't cheat. You, you know, for the and for the the Thunder, this is the point of hoarding all these assets. You right. get a guy like Shea, right? You, you you build around that. You have him on a contract that makes sense. He can, he's the prize of the Paul George trade. You don't just then ship that off two years right. later and say, let's get even more, more draft picks. picks. Yeah, yeah. For something yeah. that yeah. could become picks. maybe as good as him. Yeah. It's like it's like the price of a deal. I hate, that's a deal. I hate picks. It, I remember when Kawhi was up and it was like, I won't give up picks for Kawhi. Yo, what is the chance that that pick <laughs> one day ends up fair. maybe as good as Kawhi? You know what you, you have right now. You give up the picks. Yeah, get, are we taking the mystery box or are we That's taking the, the car? I think it's I, the I gamble. I see the car. We're doing the Peter Griffin thing. Maybe there's a car in it. Yeah. No, there's a car. It's I right there. It. But, like, this is the point of, of, of gathering all those assets <laughs> is to eventually have players that are as good as Shea Gilders Alexander. So I think Pressy, I mean, look, he's done a good job, but I think that he's sort of brought this assumption on himself because we're so used to yeah. him doing these moves for that. But building around him seems like the whole end game and the whole purpose of having done this in the first place. Yeah. But it's OKC, and you're right. I didn't even think about the idea from his perspective. Does he want to stay there, mm -hmm. the small markets? But then look at look San Antonio Spurs. Like That's a small market, and for a long time, they were it. So it's possible. It's just yeah. going to take a minute. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> that was my awful, awful segue into another game that happened last night. <laughs> All right, the Warriors beat the Spurs. And beating them is probably not even the correct word. They just annihilated them. Uh, Jordan Poole got the start, 36 on bobblehead night. Should he be starting, period? I mean, listen, this was a, this was a, this was a key game for a team that's been struggling where they plays out, they put this kid in, and he absolutely balls out and has the best game of his season so far. Um, I love him off the bench. I love that power. I love the offense going through him. But yeah, I think as we continue to go on and if, Kay, uh, if Clay continues to struggle, why not? It worked last night. They blasted them. Obviously, it's I mean, a tanking, oof. you know, team there. But like, no, it's not, Chandler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I this is this is the story last night. This kid absolutely took advantage of being in the starting lineup last night, and uh, you know, I don't see them winning how they did last night and then changing it. I Ooh. would stick with it. It's no coincidence his absolute best game of the season is also the Warriors' absolute best game of the season. 36 points, he shot he shot the hell out of the ball. Uh, even, you know, Steph only had 16. He was able to play the background and, and watch as that happens. It also helps that the Anthony Lamb came off the bench and made six out of seven. And, he you know, <laughs> we're seeing the transition of this team. Right. Whether Clay likes it or not, it, it is what it is. Now, is he willing to accept a role off the bench? Who I knows? Think so, right? I I still think there's value to pull coming off the bench and guiding second units and being that guy. He's gonna have to find his rhythm in doing that as well. Kerr has shown reluctance throughout the years to put young guys in over his vets, over the guys he's been to war with. I don't think it's changing. Really? I actually think if Pool can channel this off the bench, same amount of I mean 29 minutes, he can get that off the bench still. They can sure. play lineups where he can still get 29 minutes. Um, that's probably where they make it work and maximize themselves. Yeah, I'm not sure what Steve Kerr is going to decide, but it was interesting after the game. He said that Jordan Poole, 
uh, the team played best and he played Jordan Poole played best when he was starting next to Steph just because they were able to bounce off each other you know and that it's not the same effect when he comes off the bench it was interesting he said that um, but Clay Thompson like Eddie said that's the guy that they've gone to, he's gone to war with like they've played in high level games I would be somewhat surprised if he just put Clay off the bench um, hmm. But, I mean, this is a team that's clearly going through stuff. They're going to have to figure it out. A lot of it is going to have to come internally. Like, if Klay Thompson steps up and says, I'm coming off the bench, that's makes it see, a little yeah. easier. Um, but Doesn't he strike you as the kind of guy that would do that? As you know, but he, mm. you know, that's a, that's a level of stature as well. You know, like, he's been there for a long time. I, it, it's, a t it's, it's a very yeah, tough situation. There's, there's, there's still a level of respect and what have I done for you. But it, it's tough, man, because like, like Shams just said, having Jordan Poole and Steph Curry on the court, and if they're both going, this is a, this is a tough team, man. They're hard to beat. And I don't know if Clay can, can put up many nights like Jordan Poole did last night anyways. So it's, it's tough. But, it, so yeah, Steve Kerr is a big decision. To make. Uh, we've also entered the, the Clay, And here's, here's Kerr, by the way. Game is easier when he starts, but that he's not considering a lineup change. Although, so you know, what is that? You could say anything. That's kind of him saying he's better starting, right. so eventually he's going to start, right? He yeah. has to. Yeah. They dealt with a little bit of this in the playoffs uh, with Jordan struggling on defense, but also Clay struggling on defense and just trying to figure out, you know, should we maximize offense? Should we, you know, should we do what is best for us? They both struggled terribly against the Grizzlies and then the start against the Celtics. They turned it around, obviously won the title, but yeah, there's a little bit to, to figure out there, and maybe this year isn't the year. I also think people are overestimating Clay's kind of just chill mode. It's like just well. accepting of everything. Yeah. I don't. I don't are you, think. Was that directed at me? Because I, <laughs> I feel like you're like hey. Michelle. He's not that chill. I, hey, <laughs> you threw it out there. I'm just saying. You know. The man lives on a boat, for God's sake. So what do you want? I, I think people were overestimating his willingness to just accept a lesser role, lesser money. People think he's hmm. just going to come back in in two years for a smaller contract to keep the gang together. Why? Why? Why do we think that? He maximized last point. year. This is the player that when Kevin Durant came, said, "I'm not sacrificing nothing," and then didn't shot the ball more. <laughs> so I I don't see that. I don't see that going as seamlessly as everybody thinks. Yeah, in no way, shape, or form is he just going to throw in the towel. And, but I think they he sees where this team is going. He sees let's next year. Is Clay Thompson starting on the war? Like, so I think he sees the direction it's going. He sees him getting the bag. He sees kind of Wiggins and him being the focal point going forward with Steph and him and Draymond kind of say, taking that back seat. But I think he's starting to realize physically and mentally that his career is kind of declining. Oh, man. And this kid's on the rise. So it's, it's tough. But, yeah, I don't think he's just going to be thrilled. But I don't think he's going to go to Steve Kerr's office today and say, you know yeah, what, I'm gonna, I, I, think I, I, come off, I think I should come off the bench. No chance. I mean, he's entered the sort of – tweeting thing about it too that sort of cryptic passive aggressive mm -hmm. I'm coming back those kinds of things I feel like when you enter that phase all oh, LeBron James <laughs> excuse me <laughs> that's sort of like you know but the, I, that wasn't the I wouldn't say that was the biggest thing that came out of the game last night it was the James Wiseman news from yesterday going to the G League for a a period of time that we're not even sure about by the way I guess we they we they, no idea. they they want him to play five, you know, multiple, multiple games down there. Like, they want him to spend, Steve Kerr said last night, at least 10 games. He played well in preseason, and just statistically, the plus minus, the numbers, when he's on the floor with Steph, where Steph is one of the easiest guys to play with. He makes everyone around him better. Obviously, one of the landmark players in league history. Those two guys have not played well together at all. All their numbers are significantly lower when they're on the floor, so. Um, if you're not playing well with Steph Curry, you're not going to be playing much for the Warriors. And, yeah, he's going to spend some time in the G League. They're going to play a lot with Jermichael Green at the back of five, uh, you know, backing up Kamal Looney. So he, he's got to get, get reps down there. And I think this will ultimately be good for him because he needs to go down there. He needs to get reps. He needs to play. And he needs to go and dominate and show Steve Kerr, show the Warriors, like, look, I'm ready. I can help this team contend to win a championship this year. And he just hasn't come along as quick or as good as that. I think. Why obviously. not though? What, what's? It's tough because his situation. He's basically a, a lob threat, pick and roll. You know, it, it, it should be working. The floor yeah. is spaced. He's surrounded by shooters and scores. He's got a playmaking four that's kind of breaking him off. They're getting out on the break. I, I don't know because it seems on paper to be a perfect fit, like person out personnel wise. So. I, I hope he just goes down there and he takes this personal and he uses this as motivation and dominates the G League and then comes right back and, and there's a key factor going forward because he should be. The Warriors operate like a football team. We have a system. You either fit it or you don't. <laughs> we'll move on from you. Kelly Oubre, you didn't fit. We'll move on from you. And on and on and on. So they're bigs. They're out there to set screens. They're out there to rebound. They're out there to kick the ball up to Draymond to get it. 
They're not out there to post up, catch, turn, pivot, middle, and, and, and throw a hook shot up. That's not the role they want him to play. It's crazy looking back. The, the two guys he got picked between, Anthony Edwards and LaMelo Ball, you know, what do those guys do for the team right now? We're talking about the guard position, the wings, and, and, and how they can add there. They passed up LaMelo. A lot of people wondered why. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this isn't his skill set, what he's doing. His body language is terrible. He's <clears throat> he's supposed to be setting screens, and they got stats now. So he's like one of the worst screeners in the league. <laughs> and it's it's just not the, op, the, the optimum situation for him. And, yeah, maybe in the G League he gets screwed back. He comes back a little happier and understands what he's going for. But – does he come back happier, or is this, is this like a, a mental A guy like thing. this, this could, this could have pissed him off and offend right? him to make him even go more into a shell. Kevin Looney, Kevon Looney will be starting the rest of these games this season, no yeah. matter what James Wiseman does in the G Look, how many times have we also seen it on paper? It seems like such a great idea. It just doesn't work in real life, like whether yeah. it's a chemistry thing or a fit thing. I mean, I feel like there's a good chance, and then maybe they get pieces for him or they decide to – to move him at some point if they can. They they want him to pan out though. They want him to take they, they Kevon Looney's to. role, I mean, and, yeah. and that's why you drafted number two. But listen, that Oof. debate of him Lamelo, I mean, it's probably going to exist for a little this bit. This is he's a talented guy. This is by far the number one consensus player in his high school class. And then going into college before he missed all his games, it was like, yo, he'll go number one. We love Ant. We love Lamelo. He'll go number one. And then things obviously happen. He missed most of his season and all that. And there's talent there. But a lot of pressure too. A lot of pressure, and he's so. and he's dealt with he's dealt with his injuries. He's you know so. If you can't make it work with the Golden State. That's what I'm saying. You should you on, should man. he should feel zero pressure on this team right. and this right. franchise, this roster. He just needs to go out there, play hard, not be embarrassed by this demotion, and take it there as it motivation. And stop trying most, to sell it like it's not a demotion. Most kids, it's when cold. they like <laughs> most kids like this, yeah, like they they hate it. They're embarrassed. They're embarrassed yeah. to tell their friends. They think it's a, they think it's a bad thing. When really, in the long in the long big picture, this could help him mightily. Yeah, make no mistake. He's been benched, Thank and you. now he's been relegated. But it's yeah. worse to, to go to the G League, League than getting benched in the NBA. Wait, for and these you've kids. been yeah, yeah, and you've been both now. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah. That's tough. That no, hurts. No more words. Right? Yeah, no, no, no I, got, more I got nothing else. Yeah. It's, it's painful to watch. Um, we are going to take a quick break. When we come back, the latest on Trey Young and why the number 30. That is the magic number in this great, great league. We run it back, returns. Run it back, yeah. Run it all. Run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it all. Run it back. 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 It's the Beam Team, Sacramento. You know what? I give credit to whoever thought of just a way to sort of get the fans, get the team to buy in on this, and they have been, and it's every time they win, that beam gets lit. Still not making me move to Sacramento, but I do appreciate the effort. <laughs> that being said, um, we're gonna do a little, you buy on that? Okay, I think you can figure out what that means. We got, some, we got some ideas here, some actual facts. Eight players right now, eight players are averaging over 30 points a game. Are you buying, Chandler, that that can continue? I don't think so. I don't think for the rest of the season. I think teams are going to start wanting a more balanced attack. Um, you know, you know, the teams that you're seeing like the Warriors and the Celtics last year in the finals and how balanced and how deep. I think it's hard to sustain this. And you look at the guys that are averaging 30. Donovan Mitchell's one of them. Garland's been out most of the year. Giannis is one of them. Middleton's been out all year long. Shea, you would assume, is not going to continue at this clip. Um, I, I expect it to go down a little bit um, with just guys getting, teams getting healthy and guys returning. But it's fun to watch. And, and the, the, the usage rate is crazy. But like I said, I think teams would prefer it to be more balanced than these one-man shows because in the playoffs, that's very hard to do. But you're right. As a fan watching that, it's fun. Yeah, it's, it's a like, video okay, game. It's like a star. Right. Yeah. And, and you do pay to see the stars. Um, I know that's not the common what you're supposed to say out loud, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, how about Trey Young? Uh, this, yeah, I really want things to get better. He's enduring the worst true shooting stretch of his career. Um, Eddie, shooting struggles. Are you buying them lasting? Yeah, I mean, maybe not this bad, the worst of his career, but, you know, kind of like the dirty secret on Trey is he's not a great shooter. He gets the Steph comp because of the type of shots he takes and yeah, his nice. range. He can hit these shots, but the actual – him actually hitting them doesn't always add up to – look, Steph Curry is – he's the, the true shooting god. Like, he's the greatest <laughs> shooter of all time. So to compare him to that and then go out there and do that, it's, it's almost disrespectful. But, yes, Trey can make these shots. He doesn't make them as often as he does. He takes bad shots uh, all the time, it feels like. A lot of these shots are off the dribble. We were talking about it yesterday uh, at, when we were having dinner. Like, it's tough playing with a guy like this who, 
yo, a couple times a quarter, I'm just going to watch him dribble for 20 yeah. seconds and shoot from the logo and then run down there and defend his that? guy. Right. So it's, it, it, it's tough. Um, and it's not like DeJounte provides spacing to get better shots. I think the idea and the dream for a guy like him and Luca is, yo, we'll get this ball handler and he'll get some shots off the off the catch. And it almost never materializes. So I'm buying him struggling a little bit because this is kind of the shooter he is. It'll get higher than this, but right. not too much. How, how much of it is, though, that like the system in Atlanta is Trey, where like the Warriors... I guess the system is Steph, but there's a, you know, even when Steph's out of the lineup, like, they have a way and a playing style. Like, how, how much is that a, a thing? Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's big. And I think it's him. He's talented enough to kind of do both, to get guys mm. more involved. He doesn't have to take these video games, Steph I mean, Curry, just... four shots. He doesn't have to, because that is deflating as a teammate. You play defense hard for 24 seconds, you get a stop, you get out there, and having a dude pull from 30 feet within the first five seconds of the shot clock, it's miserable. And, and then when you have nights where he's just kind of going to get his own, and as the point guard, he's supposed to be getting everybody involved, it's tough. I have a question. I mean, obviously, to play in any league, you have to have the utmost confidence. But does a guy like Trey, in his mind, see himself as an equal to Steph Curry? Yeah, listen, he's his, he's not lacking confidence. I play with him in Atlanta, and he's actually he's a great he's a great kid. He's a great dude, and and yeah, he believes he's the best point guard in the NBA. He thinks he's a better shooter than Steph Curry. That's he has this chip on his shoulder that most little guys do, by the way. And, little guys. <laughs> and and he thinks he's that guy. And most nights in his whole life, and in Oklahoma, like he's been that guy. Yeah. I just think he has to has a he has to have an understanding that as a point guard and with the talented roster he has, he's got to be able to get guys involved as much as just getting himself involved every night because I think that's going to do the Hawks wonders in the long run. Yeah, if you follow his dad on Twitter, they absolutely think he's the best oh, yeah. player in the okay, league. Okay, but that's, there's nothing worse than a parent who lies. Love you know? his dad. Like, I just can't. But I, I think Chandler makes a great point. To me, Trey's gift is his playmaking. If you watch him operate the pick and roll and the way he's able to drop slip passes or find guys in, on the wings, to me, that's his gift, not yeah. shooting. As crazy as it sounds. Yeah, right? So, yeah, if he pushed more into that role, I think it would benefit the team more as a whole. But... This is the style of ball now. If you're the star, you're going to dribble it for 20 seconds and shoot whatever That's shot you want. That's not fun to and watch. His vision is nuts. Like it's, the it's way incredible. he can create, the way he can hold you off in the pick and roll is, is you know, you can you can see his his arrogance and his cockiness with, with the MSG. He's, I yeah. mean, that was yeah. great. He, yeah, he loves that though. He embraced that villain role and he <laughs> he he wants all the smoke. <laughs> that was one of the best moments. All right, Sacramento Kings. We started with the the beam of victory. They are on a three game winning streak, sitting at six and six. Chandler, six of eight. I mean, it's. Yeah. Are you buying them as a play-in team? Yeah, or more. I, listen, I think the record should be better than it is, too, with the, with the Tyler Hero travel call, the no call at the end of the game on Herder with Clay Thompson. These guys are in a very good spot, right? And they and they have a very good team. They have two good players. Sabonis has been absolutely balling lately. I saw a stat where De'Aaron Fox leads the NBA in clutch points. Like, his shooting numbers are insane. And they got a little squad over there with Mitchell, with Keegan Murray, with Harrison Barnes. They kind of have that balance attack with their two main guys. And uh, I have really liked what they're doing. And this is a team that, like, if they catch fire, I don't want to see them like in first round of the playoffs. I love that team. Baby bonus, my guy, he's, he had 23 rebounds the other day. And like you mentioned, De'Aaron is just clutch. He's been clutch his whole career. They right. just don't win a ton we of games. We never saw it. And so he he's – we mentioned those guards earlier, um, like Shea. He's, come, he's of that cloth. He's that great. He was that high of a draft pick as well. Uh, lefty, just quick as – might be the quickest guy in the league. His jumper has gotten better slowly as his career has gone on. He's great. I, I love what they're building over there. They finally had the <laughs> longest playoff drought in sports. So they yeah, finally are looking on the cusp they're, of they're making it happen. They're in position. They're in position. Yeah. And Fox is in better shape this year. He yeah. came to camp. And you could just see he looks like a he looks like the guy we saw a couple of seasons ago where we thought he was on the cusp of being an all-star. But it's, it's interesting. With the Kings, they usually get off to slow starts. Um, or get, they, they get off the good starts, and then they completely yeah. fall off a cliff. This year, they got off, I think, 0-3, 0-4, yep. mm -hmm. and they won 6 of 8. They're playing great basketball right now. Listen to the, these last six numbers of Savonis on my laptop here. Michelle. Laptop. <laughs> 26, <laughs> 22, and 8. 21, 10, and 6. 21, 5, and 6. 19, 14, 6. 25, 11. Like, this guy is 
going right now, and the, they're making the game easy for each other. They're I having know. fun, and like, yeah, listen, this team is a, an embarrassing franchise that wants badly to get back to the playoffs. They, they run their the offense. Best. They yeah. run their offense through him, and he's yeah. looking like his pops. He's right. looking like the, you know the way he's. <laughs> they've actually together. like built a team there now. Like you have multiple yeah. guys. They have young guys now too, in, in terms of Keegan Murray, uh, Davion Mitchell. They. Kevin Herter is basically like a mix of vet young. Like they they're building a real team there. Mike Brown, like you have to give him yeah. kind of everywhere he yes. goes. He has at least some level of, of good success, whether mm -hmm. it's Cleveland, the Lakers. Um, so I, he's he's doing a good job. The so culture far. he builds they the have culture, culture, which yeah. I you know it's they like have such a real a, coach fund. Yeah, right. It's like it's a thing. Um, we're gonna move to the Spurs for uh, for a second here. Keldon Johnson has got a career high, almost 23 points a game. Eddie, are you buying him as the Spurs' top scoring option? Somebody has to do it, right? <laughs> Somebody has to do it. That's the worst answer Why not ever? the Olympics? He's really improved his jumper. Though. Why not He's the gold really medalist? But jumper. no, he has improved. And, and, and you can tell that summer. He dropped some LBs. That, that like, summer dealing with, with, with the big fellas on, on the Team USA has benefited him. He's in better shape. Uh, he's a versatile scorer. I love what he's doing out there. I love these uniforms as well, as we said yesterday. Yeah, we do. So no, I mean, look, this, this is this is a great role for him to further develop into a better player. Into, yo, know, maybe he's not the centerpiece of what this team eventually ends up being. Right. But this is only going to help him get better in the long run and the team as well. And you know, maybe next year when he's Wembenyama will be there. Yeah, or Scoot. Uh, it's he's a perfect compliment. Seems like a good idea. Scoot Henderson, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Let's get scooped out there. He's not getting enough love either, because that kid. Yo, he's a monster. Cooper. Uh, he's a monster. Well, he. You know what? It could be a good thing, because he'll wear that as a chip on his shoulder. Yeah, exactly. I was having to hear Yo. about this other guy this entire yeah. time. Uh, how about Memphis? You got Ja Morant, Desmond Bain, the third highest scoring duo in the league. You buying them as a top five duo, Chandler? I didn't check your laptop. Make sure. Yeah. <laughs> top, <laughs> top five is tough, honestly. Desmond oh, Bain. Oh, really? Desmond Bain. Listen, he's had a great start. He's had a good season and a half. He's unbelievable shooter but you're looking at guys like Tatum and Brown and Bede and, and uh, James Middleton and Giannis we haven't even talked like if Kyrie and KD could ever figure it out oh, LeBron and AD listen they are right there on the cusp but did Jaren you say ja LeBron and AD? Jaron Jackson was their second best player until he went down and kind of Bain has now been thrown in this role and he's taken full advantage of it and he's fun to watch and he's taken over in the fourth quarters and he's having a very 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 good season so far but to give to give him top five already is a stretch for me, but he's close. Does it? I feel like, I feel like it's doable. Am I, was, I wrong? Am I? He's. he's it, it sounds crazy. I mean, it does sound they crazy. They are that good, and yeah. Ja is that good. Right. right. You know, that's what I think elevates it. Um, I look, we respect the veterans, the guys who have been doing this for years, but you know, at some point, we can't ignore the results we're seeing from them, and and. The, they're a good compliment, which I think is what works best for them. Is it because Bain's not a, quote, household name? Not like, yet. we just don't look at him yeah, that again, way? He's in a small market, and I honestly think Jaron Jackson coming back will even make him even better, having that threat inside um, is only going to make this duo better. Desmond Bain, drop the arms routine. He's the best arms in the league. <laughs> he's one of the best names in sports, he Bain. Out. He's he perfect. He, 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 he does it. He uh, Washington Wizards, I mean, I feel like we don't talk about them a lot, enough perhaps, because they've won four straight. Eddie, you buying them as a top four Eastern Conference team? They've done this without Beal, too. Yeah, they're, yeah right? Right on, they're right on the cusp. Top you know, four. Top four. I, I, I know. I, Chandler's real stuck on, like, the top four. Though. It's, it, it's tough. They're right on the cusp. Um, okay, I'm going to say I'm not completely buying it because – Boston, Milwaukee. Boston, Milwaukee, yeah. Cleveland, Cleveland, Atlanta, Atlanta, okay. Okay. Uh, Toronto. They're gonna be in the play yeah, still think for sure. Miami's but look, still better than they're them. eight and six. They're not. It's not like they're world beaters right now. But they do have something in KP and Kuz and having these bigs that can stretch. KP was, I guess, a victim of the Luka system. We mm. didn't see his entire versatility. People were wondering if he could post up, what he could do. But he's a shot blocker. He can drive to the rim. He can handle a little bit. And he's like prototypical stretch five. It's kind of crazy he didn't work with Luka, but it's because Luka requires such a very specific guy out there for that role. But Kuzma has been a revelation. And like Sam said, they're doing this out without Brad. Brad comes back, hopefully adds to that. Um, they're a solid team. They got, they got a lot to like over there. But we're just not ready for top four. I'll give you that. No, That's I mean, fair. It's, I think it's a it's deep fair. conference. Yeah, it's very, very, very. Uh, you know, the Nets are up. lurking. You they're, know? They're, yeah. Stop it. Uh, LeBron <laughs> wants to be a better flopper. Who doesn't? And one-on-one overtimes, NFL-style dunk celebrations when we come back. Running back, yeah. Run it over. Run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it over. Run it back. Run it over. And on the other end, how would you rate your defense tonight? You tell me, man. I'm going to know something about you. How would you rate my defense tonight? Be honest. There's no wrong answers. Be honest. Be honest. I can accept that. 
I can accept. We got the win. I can accept. I, I appreciate your honesty. That is the perfect way to handle uh, anything in the world. Uh, yeah, that of course, Zion Williamson turning turning the tables on media. I like it. The B minus risky. was like B minus. Generous, <laughs> like, generous <laughs> grade too, by the way. <laughs> That crossover Jeremy Grant had on? Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. That's the best, though. When you don't feel like answering a question or maybe you don't have an answer, just turn it around. It's classic media training. Well done. That was good. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? What do you yeah. think? Yeah. You tell me. Yeah. Which is leading us to our, wait, what? Because we're going to have some sound here, some various players saying various words, and we need to figure out what's going on. So first up, <clears throat> LeBron. This is what he had to say following the loss to the Clippers. I looked at a lot of guys tonight shoot a lot of jump shots and they go on nine, 13 times to the, to the free throw line. I gotta learn how to flop or something. Seriously, I need to learn how to do that. Swipe my head back or do something to get to the free throw line. Cause it's, the, I missed it. It's, it's getting a little, it's getting too repetitive. It's three games straight. A lot played against it. LeBron, we haven't. Huh, Here's my Chandler, thing. take it away. Here's my thing. <laughs> Learn how to flop. This man flops. Right. He he, he is. <laughs> what? That so was, like he doesn't embellish. That was a crazy comment because he's low key like known for kind of flopping and he's physical and he's strong and he is an absolute specimen. But <laughs> start flopping is a little nuts to me. And he likes that one. You're, <laughs> but, you're being very. It's like Einstein saying. I, mean, I need to learn how to do right. multiplication. Like he's, you know it. He's <laughs> flopping. He's grabbing his face. He's looking at the refs. So dramatic. Quite often. Right. So, Le so the idea of start flopping is funny to me. <laughs> LeBron invented the roll on the floor right. for three minutes to hope to get a review. I love LeBron. I think he's the GOAT. But, like, yo, you have learned how to flop. Give yourself some credit, big fella. You got it. Give, your, give yourself some <laughs> and credit. And please don't do it more. Yo, like, like, <laughs> right? We don't want more of it. No, no it's not neither. fun to watch. But that was a good one. There's uh, The Lakers gave us a couple good gems. Thank you, because Pat Beverly's up next. And this is uh, him on why the Lakers beat the Nets. What was the key to the defensive side of the ball? Oh, Me guard KD. <laughs> you always like that, right? I mean, I didn't see that. Yeah, that's, that was the key from the beginning. Love that. I set the tone, team responded. Okay, before we can get to the comment, where are we on designer head to toe logo? Yay or nay? Because I feel like it was a yo, lot. Throw in the track jacket on top of the <laughs> designer. Like, yo, that's a little. That's, that's a, a lot little of crazy. Dior, but uh, well done. Okay, so yes. Did he shut down KD? Look, man, sources say Pat was the <laughs> friendliest guy possible on the court. And I was close enough, not bragging at all. Like, yeah, you I'm are. just You're saying. Bragging, brag. I was close enough to hear him yelling for the help every time Kevin caught the ball. So, yeah, set the tone, I guess, with the double teams. There you go, Pat. Good job, bro. And here's another thing. When you know the double team's coming, you can press up. You can pick up 94 feet. You can do all the hoot and holler you want because you know when this man catches the ball, there's like a six eight guy coming to your to the rescue, so this is but this is his value. He yeah. barks, he gets the team going, he's aggressive. He's and a WWE he character. He gets under your skin. Yeah, it's, he's he, good at he's, it. He's this is what his value is to this team. And, and well, his, I think Pat's <laughs> he he talks a lot of, of things you know out there. So many so, things. So 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 so, so, <laughs> so, the way he says it's so, so many nice. things. So 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 when, so when you speak, you know, sometimes I feel like he's trying to convince himself. And Ooh, I think when you when you psychology. watch wow, that, okay. that's, yeah. his that's, talent. that's his talent. That's yeah, what like, he's, yeah. he's speaking doing. Into he's speaking into existence. But even more than that, <laughs> I think, think he's trying to convince the audience, so I think shout out. Hey, I, he didn't do a good job, yeah, I'll say that. But look, Chandler, <laughs> if me and Shams could double team you and foul you all we want, we'd do a decent job too. You right? can let me get and Anthony if Shams, Davis. And if Shams is guarding me and I see you coming, yeah, he could he could talk all the shit he wants. <laughs> he could get in my face, he could get under me, he could foul me, because I know I have help coming. This man cannot guard Kevin Durant one-on-one. -on -one. Nobody can. Kevin, well, Kevin had 31 points this yeah. game. He oh, also had a response. Shooting. Uh, Lock him up. To, yeah. to the, he always has a response. Kevin... Yes, somebody, uh, <laughs> I mean, just to yes, the point. He is. <laughs> oh, I love it. God, he like reads the comments, then he responds to the comments to the original comments. It's I'm, very, I'm, I'm it's devoted. I might have that one. I might have had to let him know about that one. He's devoted <laughs> what on that KD one. What is KD average this year? 31. And what do you have against Patrick Beverly? 31. <laughs> yeah, way to lock him up. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. Um, Wizards beat Dallas, and Kyle Kuzma had some words after that. Luca's been on a tear this year. How'd you guys hold an eight for 21 with five turnovers? Um, we just did a good job. We we know that you know the, their team is very limited outside of him. 
great what? Balenciaga glasses, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Could you rock those? No. Inside? You're I like can't. LA guy, though. Uh, but that. indoors, dude? It's tough. No. Chandler's more classy. Yeah. yeah. Classy. <laughs> Chandler's got a black suit on. Right. Yeah, yeah. you do that frame, but no, no, no rhinestones. I got you. By the way, it was so distracting, I don't even know what he said. <laughs> was yeah. it wrong? Well, by the way, he's not wrong. His, his outfit's ridiculous. <laughs> he should, but his, he's not wrong. The Mavs are getting so predictable that they yeah. have this man doing everything. And it's going to get frustrated for Luka. And they need guys like Reggie Bullock. They need guys like Dorian Finney-Smith. They need these role guys. Every time I look at a Mavs box score, it's Luka with 35. <laughs> Spencer Dinwiddie might throw shots. in. And then, yeah, and then everyone else in single-digit scoring. That's, to me, not a recipe work. for success. No, no, he's right. I mean, t players in the league will tell you, yo, the the – the blueprint for them isn't tough. We know what we're doing. Right. We know our scheme going in. We're staying home on our shooters. We're doing whatever. And, and actually going out there and doing it and, and having the legs to do that all night is different. But, yeah, I mean, he didn't lie at all. We all know that about Again, the Again, in the playoffs, too, they are going to do what the Lakers did to KD the other night. As soon as he crosses half court, he's getting doubles, and he's making these Not other guys yeah. beat you, which is – also, if he does this all season long, the health thing, I think, is going to be a huge issue. You, gotta, you have a backup plan or something. Uh, Javon Carter had 36 points against Oklahoma City and then words. 36 points is the result, 12 assists. At what point did you know you just had it and you had to keep going? When I woke up. This morning, what did you think? Let's get it. Former Nets legend. Yeah, so legend. Good. Suns legend. Right, that happens, right? You wake up in the morning, you're like, this is the day I die. By the way, I had him at Memphis. He was he was a rookie. And this he's he's Patrick <laughs> Beverly 2.0. <laughs> awesome. He's this defensive player, he's defensive player of the year, I think, a couple of times at West Virginia. And he's he's created this whole persona where that's that's his game, Perfect. that's his yeah, he's confident, he can score though. Damn. it's tough. Yeah, I mean yeah, it's true. He, he can score I don't know if Pat's bit. ever had thirty six. <laughs> I love Javon. He wears two different shoes in every game. Not yes. like yo, know, a red one and a blue one. A Kobe six and a Kobe five. Does he ask? What? Why? It's insanity. Like I, I can't. Is there, I don't understand. Is there a good reason or just? Yeah, with the ask. I mean, he woke up and he I mean, felt like that guy. I guess. It's, it's <laughs> my thing. I, that's what I have going on. Okay, fair enough. It's a great answer. It's a perfect answer. Uh, we're gonna do a little convince me right now. You, you know the drill. Some of these are easier to convince than others. Chandler, we we'll start with you. Okay. <clears throat> to prevent tanking, one lottery team each season should randomly select to lose. Their draft pick. They should be selected to do that to sort of incentivize not sucking. <laughs> Risk tanking. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine if you if you suck all year long and you do not get to get your Ooh. pick and uh, like That'd especially with this year with Victor coming into it, it's 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 that would be tough. And so I think it would be interesting. It kind of levels the playing field. It keeps everybody competing. Um, but still, like it's one team out of fourteen. Like the, I would Ooh. I would still probably tank. And not you like the odds. I like my odds like still of not losing a pick until, I don't know. until it happens and I lose the French kid. Okay. Then I'm pissed. But yeah, I mean, it, it would even the playing field a little bit, and and I think it would just kind of get these That's teams scary. going for the play-in now at least, which is happening already this year with some of these teams that are accidentally winning. Accidentally. Yeah. Yeah, that's, you, right? yeah, exactly. More than should be. Um, yeah, it's a little Russian roulette with the draft picks. I don't know. Right. If, I don't know if I want to risk it. One in fourteen. Mm. Uh, Eddie. Convince me that every team should designate one starter per game that's mic'd up. Yo, if, if I'm commissioner of the NBA, I'm making one sweeping change immediately. <laughs> I'm micing everybody. And I'm charging. Everybody. And I'm doing like a special league pass. What? You can get this feed for like $2,000 a year. <laughs> I, that's a great idea. I pay it immediately. Like, yo, it comes with a disclaimer. These guys are cussing all night. Like, all you night. know this. But I need that feed. Don't, no commentators, give me LeBron yelling at the refs because he yeah, flopped. Like, like, give me all that. You're going to have to get good, really tiny little no mics. Way Where are we on, on that, Sean? I'm taking too literal. Yeah, I'm taking too literal. The PA is not agreeing to that. Yo, come <laughs> on, guys. Sorry, like, let's do it. You could price that at whatever. Give it to the PA. Like, That's true, you know, too. I'd, I'd pay whatever. All right, baby. Put I actually right wanted this in bill. Formula One. I want all the radios to be public, and I would pay extra to hear that. Extra. Like, because you, that's, you, the, that's the juice. There is no... Like price this. that would make me balk at that. I'm like, yo, dude, can you do it in payments? Like, like, put it on my bill. I'll take it. I need it. <laughs> a monthly installment. Yeah. All right, fair enough. Uh, Chandler, again, this is these are big changes. Overtime yeah. games should be settled by a one-on-one -on -one contest featuring each team's best player. Yeah, I think this would actually be kind of interesting. Like, yeah. imagine if 
Memphis plays Philly and Joel Embiid has to play John Moran one on one, or if vice versa, if that's <laughs> tough. Come on, man. We got we got some. Or if Steven Adams on that. Well, it Steven going? Adams on that. <laughs> <Steven Adams>. What <laughs> if the other team gets to pick someone on the on, Ooh, on the opposing team oh, to fire. play one on one? Wait, so the two worst people are going to be? Well, yeah, whoever they want. Or like, you know, know, yeah, like it's, it's like a coin flip, and you have to see who you pick first, and you can match up accordingly. I don't hate it. Yeah, I do not hate it. I think it'd be fun. Fans listen; they watch Team Five on Five all the time, throwing some one on one in overtime. You could do a double overtime. How about that? You get one overtime, like soccer. Yeah. You have a chance to figure yeah, it out. If you don't tired. have it figured out, then, and then we go you play to play. One on one. Yeah. yeah. I, th I think that has more legs, yes. Okay, we'll go. see what you I'm can get on that. We've got until tomorrow. Let's see if the PA will go Let's see yeah, if you can just <laughs> shoot that out there and see what they think. Uh, Eddie, convince me that NBA players should celebrate after in game dunks the same way the NFL dudes do. Uh, they don't do this already? I mean, like, I would. They're I not need choreographed. I need them celebrating like the defense does. You yeah. know when they get like a pick six yeah. and they all run into the, the whole team? Oh, into, let's do that. I, I, yo, the we're talking about this earlier with the text. Like, yeah. Please just let these you guys got a text do for doing this. Imagine if someone started moonwalking oh. or something. <laughs> <laughs> Or brought out a prop. Or yeah, doing the thing. giddy down the court at their right. after he gets a dunk. Like, I'm look. I'm all for whatever makes the game fun. Let these guys be bashful. Let them let them do all the stuff they want to do. But you can't even slam the ball. Like, you can't. You even can't do even that. stand up you on the bench it. no more and say, "Good job, my my teammate." You know, so Good it's job. like. <laughs> Jump job, my remember, teammate. How about Jump Bond's delay a second delay a game for getting out of the coach's Yo, box? The I was day. I was in the in the arena. In the I middle of a possession, what was going on? In the middle of a possession, the I'm ref stops the game because he's like a foot out of the coach's the box. The refs see so much. Like, how are you even? Stop making the game about you. Let Leave the this players. Alone, bro. Yeah, like, Let's stop. play the game. Uh, we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, some of the best pregame outfits. I mean, I feel like we've already seen two. Uh, that's when Run It Back <laughs> returns. <laughs> Run it all, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it all, run it back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, tank tops with no, nothing underneath in real life. I don't know. I have a rule against that. Just like two first names, but that's all right. We'll get there. Eddie's looking at it like, yeah, all right. The, the tie and the sweater on, like that was the problem. Very third grade. Very third grade. <laughs> I just did that yesterday, but whatever, <laughs> Judge. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bitter break time, guys. Um, it, it is, yes, it is my favorite part because we are given gifts every single game day in this, this beautiful league. And so we start with... <laughs> <laughs> Wow. How do you even see through is that? He under yeah, you know? No, bro. This makes me feel so like What's not he? with it and, and older because this just this, <laughs> I'd be terrified if I saw him on the street. Right? Yeah, like this just is not it. Are the I'm assuming you can see through the little is that Yeah, I would, Why are I we would, doing this? I would hope. <laughs> Mandalorian is uh, like a call. I would hope he can see. What, yeah. This looks like, what is that game? Uh, I, I forget what it's called. Game. Fall off? Like one of them games. But it's good game, yeah. yeah it's a good game. But look, I has, think it looks like some weird sex stuff. Like, not, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't Jesus, like it. Is that Michelle? too early in the morning? Like, not for me. I showed you my bed. Oh my now God. you're talking about this. For God's sake. It's taking it's a, a turn. Family network. Guys, it's like 8 a.m. We're, we're, like, 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 we're not laughing at the green socks enough. Like He really put thought into the socks. Like, this is a lot. Safety. Say it's a break. Is that? Uh, yeah, that's. Shane, oh yeah, right. It Shane is a break. Kills it ninety nine percent of the time, but that's like, all right, bro. Can we get we some Nick Claxton? Because now, I mean, what? It can't get worse. Can it get worse? It could get worse. No. Was this the other night in L.A.? Yes. Yeah, Nick came to L.A. with his, with his, with it ready. He, wow. He, he, the Canadian cutoff tuxedo. Yeah, very eighties, very uh. Like I don't big even, shoulders I don't on that. Hate it. He told me after the game because I was asking him, "Yo, is your eye okay?" He's yeah. like, "Yeah." And he's and he's like, and I put it on though, right? And he's telling us outfit. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all right, Nick. Like, <laughs> yes. Enjoy your night, bro. They are skinny jeans. They are very, very skinny jeans. Nick's, <laughs> Nick hanging on to the skinny jeans. The the, the baggy is back, and he's hanging oh, on to the skinny jeans. Two skinnies. Um, we got I'm another guy. I like this one. You like, do? Cool. I, well, look. Compared to the. <laughs> The problem is we go from whatever that yeah, first the, the bar thing is so was low to now. this, which it, you know. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. Is he hiding two children underneath his coat? <laughs> Inspector what is Gadget. Happening? What is this? This is. I, see, I like this more than the first two. This is, it I, doesn't I, fit well though, right? No, it's, yeah, the pants are. This little, is like a catch me if you can. Yeah. It's like Mr. Gadget. <laughs> Outfit, you know. Inspector Gadget though. For yeah, sure. like is. Like Abigail. Is that two people on top of each That's other's shoulders? That's what it looks like. Like, like kids trying to sneak into something. Interesting. Like. That's Chandler would rock that. I would rock the 80s it or before 90s. I'd rock the cutoff denim <laughs> well, with no shirt underneath. I mean, I technically have a coat that looks like that. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, it's, it's a And you probably have some black pants. Yeah. I'm sure you have some. Oh, something my gosh. Like that. All right, that's going to do it for us on a Tuesday. But the good news for everyone, we'll be back tomorrow, guys. The channel's going to be wearing that jacket. <laughs> the laptop. <laughs> 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 yeah, we should. And I'm bringing a laptop tomorrow. See you tomorrow. <laughs>